um, uh, last week I preached on in a moment. In the twinkling of an eye, we shall all be changed. And so I want to bring another, I don't know why, but I, I just sort of stuck on this prophecy idea. And so in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 1 through 3, we're going to look at some of the signs of the times. Now, you know, the Apostle Paul, when he used the word last times, he indicated that he thought they were in the last times in those days. And the last times simply mean any time that Jesus could come again. He could have come in Paul's day. He could have come in the days that followed. Uh, he could have come in the days of Martin Luther or D.L. Moody or Charles Spurgeon. He could have come last week. But the fact is, he is coming. And they've given us some signs of his coming. Some of these signs will not take place fully until the tribulation period. But we see them coming on the scene right now. And we'll look at chapter 2, or, excuse me, Second Thessalonians chapter number uh, 2 and verses 1 through 3. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto him. So Paul says in verse 1, it's by the coming of our Lord and by our gathering together unto him. So he's talking about what he talked about in 1st Thessalonians. The first Thessalonians, the Bible says we shall all be caught up together with him in the clouds. That you be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled neither by spirit nor by word nor by letter as from us, as that the day of Christ is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and the man of sin be revealed, the son of partition. Let's read verse 4. Who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that is worship, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. So those last two verses deal with the coming of the Antichrist. And the rest of the chapter deals also uh, with some of that. Look at verse 9. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. So there is coming on the scene, I believe shortly, this Antichrist who is going to set him up, self up as God. Not only as uh, the ruler of the world, but he's going to exalt himself and claim that he is God uh, come again in human flesh. Uh, you know, there was a day when almost all denominations preached the gospel and believe the book. I, I remember Brother Jones talking about having a, a big citywide um, revival going on in Oceana, and uh, the Methodist Church came, the Presbyterian Church came, and and they had I forget now about 50 people saved that week or in a two-week period, and uh, those were the days when they all believed in the King James Bible. They all believed salvation by grace through faith. Uh, they all believe that men are saved and, and can know they're saved. And so they, you know, someone said this about history. A people that is ignorant of its own past is, is adrift without purpose. So if we are ignorant of our past, that's what happened. If you go to most churches today, you go to a Methodist church today, they probably don't even know who, who um, uh, John Wesley was. You go to a Lutheran church, they don't know who, who uh, Martin Luther was. They don't know what, how the church got started. You go to a Presbyterian church, they don't know about John Knox and others who founded the Presbyterian denomination. 
but they all started out wanting to see people get saved and born again. And they started out preaching the gospel. But then the liberals, like most of them are today, they're just liberal. They don't. Many of them are just uh, deny the virgin birth. You know, the Methodist who just blatantly deny the virgin birth and the resurrection. Those are liberal churches. They're not even churches as far as God's concerned. They are not churches. They are social gatherings. That's all they have become because they forgot where they came from. They forgot why they're, what they're here for. Uh, when was the last time you heard of a Methodist church having visitation and running buses and trying to get people saved? They don't, they don't do that anymore. But that's why John Wesley founded the Methodist church. And John Wesley came to America from England and uh, started preaching, I think, around Georgia when he started out. And then he came under conviction and realized that he was not saved himself. He went back to England and uh, got saved and born again. And then he came back to America and started the Methodist churches. Then you got not only the liberals, but you got really people who are hypocrites. Uh, they, they're just, they say one thing, do another. You know, I, just like years ago, the Southern Baptist seminaries were just filled with these liberal professors. I remember Brother Wayne Henderson talking about it. It's the reason he left the Southern Baptist uh, church uh, was because he saw that he said there was a young lady in the class, and this professor got up and started talking about how uh, you know, the Bible and wasn't really inspired and it wasn't perfect and all this. And she stood up right in the middle of class and said, I am going to believe my mama because my mama told me the Bible is the Word of God and she just got up and walked out. And uh, so, you know, this I, years ago, several years ago, I think this is when I was in Oakland, so it had been before 2005, uh, I saw an ad in the paper in some kind of Christian magazine that they're having a King James Bible conference in Mount Airy, North Carolina, Midway Baptist Church, mid, uh, Mount Airy, North Carolina. And they were going to have a woman come and stand up and teach the men Bible doctrine to a bunch of preachers. I called the pastor. And I quoted the scripture about the, the women not being able to teach men, usurping authority. And his response was, well, that's debatable. I said, the Bible is not debatable. It says that a woman is not permitted to usurp authority over the man and teach in the local church. And so, it, you know, it's, a, it's the epitome of hypocrisy when you say, I believe the King James Bible, but then you don't obey it. You, don't, you just ignore uh, the parts you don't like. Or, when you, you, you know, people say, well, uh, that was back in Paul's day. You know, it was just a cultural thing. No, God didn't give us a cultural book. He gave us an eternal book. And its principles are still alive today. Um, Peter Ruckman was one of those men. He, he stood firmly on the King James, or King James Bible. But <clears throat> he was married three different times. And so you can't say he believed the Bible. He didn't believe the Bible. Uh, and so another hypocrite. More dangerous than the, the liberal Methodist. More dangerous than the liberal Lutherans, Catholic Church, more dangerous. The guy who says, I believe the King James Bible, but preaches and practices things contrary to it. And so we have problems there. We ought to stay, listen, we ought to stay on the safe side of every issue. If it's, if, if it's questionable, and there's not too many things that the Bible does not declare by principle or uh, by direct word that are debatable. But it, if, if, it is, if it is, we would say, you know, a gray area, they want to call it, 
We've got to stay on the safe side of that. And that's where churches have gone wrong. Churches, when the pressure got on, and from, you know, especially denominational churches, they could, they could blackball you. They wouldn't let you preach in their churches. Uh, that happened to John Wesley when he was in England. They wouldn't let him preach in the churches. After he got saved and started preaching on you got to be born again, uh, they wouldn't let him preach. They told him not to come back. He wasn't preaching in any of the churches over there. So he, he got him a, a, a stump of wood, got up on it, and preached out on the street, and the people that got saved. And so we ought to stay on the safe side. The Bible has a lot to say about divorce and remarriage. We quit preaching against that. And uh, let, me, let me just say this. This, if you listen, it'll be an encouraging message to you. We're going to mention some things, but in the end, it's going to be encouraging to me to see what all God is doing and how God is coming and how all these signs are pointing to the soon return of the Lord Jesus Christ that we talked about last week and in the moment, the twinkling of an eye, we shall all be changed. We won't have this body anymore. We won't have this old sinful nature. We won't be living on a sin-cursed planet. We'll be in heaven with Jesus, raptured uh, into the very presence of God because of the blood of Jesus. We've started ordaining uh, divorce men. And now many, many, almost all denominations are, are um, ordaining women to be pastors. And they're ordaining sodomites to be pastors. How far we've come, we've come downhill. But it just tells me again, Jesus is coming soon. The Bible says a lot about modesty on women, but that was uh, contrary, and so preachers quit preaching that. Long hair on men is still wrong. The Bible says that not even nature itself teach you that a man with long hair is a shame unto him. The Bible, that word shame is the same word used over in Revelation, or Romans chapter 1 where it says God gave them over to a vile, reprobate mind. Vile. Vile. It's a shame. A vile. It's a vile for a man to have long hair. Uh, then we got rock music, man. I mean, most of these, especially these modern churches go into, if it doesn't have Baptists on it, you know, you got the Destination Church and the Elevation Church and all those. And it's just nothing more than a, than a rock concert most of the time. And with a 15-minute little sermonette, uh, that they give, you know, just to say they did, they do preach the Bible. And so, you know, common sense and love for God tells me to stay in the safety zone. When I read the Word of God, there, as I said, there's not too many places in the Word of God that 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 is questionable or there's not very many areas, even in this year. 2022, Bible's written almost 2,000 years ago. And uh, it's still relevant today. It still has, if it doesn't have the sins, it'll have the principles by which uh, we can determine right from wrong. And if Jesus didn't come for another 1,000 years and they come up with some new sins, new ways to blaspheme God, new ways to sin against God, the principles still apply. God's not going to be upset with you if you abstain from even the appearance of evil and if you strive for holiness in your life. He's not going to be upset with that. He's going to be pleased with that. You know, they say, uh, and I have been called in all preachers who preach what I preach, and, uh, you know, Brother Jones, I mean, we've all been called legalists. So they say, you're a legalist. You put people under laws. Well, there are, but here's what a legalist is. They don't even know what a legalist is. A legalist is someone who teaches that you're saved by keeping the law. That's what a legalist is. Like the Pharisees and Sadducees thought they were saved by keeping the law. I've never preached that men are saved by keeping the law. I've always preached in repentance and, and that salvation comes by faith uh, and, and grace in the Lord Jesus Christ. It's by the grace of God that we're saved. And so you can call me a legalist if you want to, but I'd call them an illegalist. I'd rather be a legalist than an illegalist. 
that's the only other alternative. It's antinomianism is the word, which means anti-law, no restraints. That's what this woke generation is all about. They say they're woke. They say they are woke to a new enlightened age, and now they have all the answers. But they're, they're asleep as far as history is concerned, the Bible is concerned, old-fashioned morality is concerned. And I'm telling you, we need to take a stand in these last days as we never had before. We need to preach the Word of God. That's my job. But uh, you need to get on board. You need to, need to support the preaching of the Word of God and say, I believe the Bible. I believe the Word of God. So it's days of apostasy. It was days when he said there'll come a, notice what he said, there'll come a falling away first in verse 3. That falling away is a falling away from the faith. They, they, and I mean, <laughs> Paul is saying this started in his day. Peter talked about the false prophets. And, and, and I mean, they started then, but it's even worse today. You can't turn, you can't listen to hardly any TV preachers or radio preachers without without hearing heresy and, you know, wrong on money. They love money. They want to, you know, take up money so they can buy their dog, an air-conditioned doghouse. I mean, it's crazy what they spend money for. Buy them a, 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 a Lear jet to travel all over the world in and never give out any money, really never spend any money. They'll, they'll take up money for poor old children over in Africa starving to death and uh, probably none of it gets over there. They'll show it on a video, but they, 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 don't, they don't give like that. So there's days of apostasy. When we see where we are today, when we see these days of apostasy, listen, we can rejoice and say Jesus is coming soon. It has never been this bad. It's been bad. There's been false prophets all the time. But there's more today. It's, it's more concentrated today. There's more churches today who stop preaching the Word of God but become liberal. we got the woke churches. I mean, I saw a, a news uh, thing on Newsmax the other day. Everybody ought to get Newsmax. If you don't have Newsmax, you're not getting the true news. But I'm saying, and they're showing this uh, lady, not a lady, no, she's far the thing from a lady. She's a um, lesbian. And I don't know, they had gay day or something. And they got kids, little kids in the church and everything. And she come in with nothing much more than a bikini on. And, and you know, the makeup. And, I mean, just, it, it, was like a, it was like a burlesque show. It was wicked. And I don't know why parents didn't get up and walk out on that. What a shame to let your kids sit there. And, and think that it's all right to dress like that, act like that, and be that. Where have we come from? Where have we gone? I mean, it's getting worse by the day. Then notice, let's go over to Luke chapter 17. Gospel of Luke chapter 17. And we're going to verse, verse 27, I believe. Verse 27, they did eat, they drank, they married wives, they were given in marriage until the day that Noah entered the ark and the flood came and destroyed them all. Likewise also it was in the days of Lot. They did eat, they drank, they bought, they sold, they planted, and builded. And the day, same day that Lot went up out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. But thus, even thus, shall it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. He says, as it was in the day of Noah, as it was in the day of Lot, so shall it be in the days of the coming of the Son of Man. Man, they did, listen, it's a day, let me just pull out a couple things out of these verses. Number one is a day of prosperity. Notice it says in verse 27, they did eat, they drank. Verse 28, as it was in the days of Lot, they did eat and they drank. They bought, they sold, they planted, they builded. That speaks of prosperity. 
Listen, did you know there's more millionaires and more billionaires in the world today than there ever has been? I mean, you know, we, we complain about being poor, but you really ought to realize there's some people around the world who are really poor. And uh, the poor folks in, in Ukraine uh, that suffered, I mean, suffered loss of family, friends, how many thousands have died just to keep, you know, just for freedom. Every war is about freedom. We value freedom. And if that happened in our nation today, we'd want to be free. We would fight again. We'd raise up an army and fight again. But these are days of prosperity. They just eat and they drink and they they build it and they sold for, for profit. They planted. They got a... I mean, they just, just went on with life, and it, that, it speaks of prosperity. But today, you know, I, I, was, I was listening to the news again on Newsmax, and they were talking about this new um, tax they were going to, you know, they raised taxes, this latest thing, uh, Democrat bill they're trying to get passed. And they said... Here's what they said. If you make less than $200,000 a year, you don't have to pay taxes. I said, who makes $200,000 a year? <laughs> I'll never have to pay taxes. That is, their, that is their line of poverty. If you make less than $200,000 a year, you are, you're, you're, you're in poverty. That's their standard. Well, I've been in poverty all my life. <laughs> But I'm telling you, it is ridiculous what they consider poverty. I guess it's because they don't want to make less than $200,000 a year. And, I mean, we live in days of prosperity. The Internet has got zillions of new businesses since it started. Uh, everybody, every store, everything's on the Internet. I mean, it is raking in billions and billions of dollars. And we, we're, we're really poor, according to their standard, $200,000 a year. And I don't know anybody makes $200,000 a year. Not only am I poor, all my friends are poor. <laughs> all my preacher friends are poor. Every church member I know is poor. Days of prosperity. But here's the good news. It tells us that Jesus is coming, and he's coming soon. Look in Luke 17, verse 22. And he said to his disciples, The days will come when you shall desire to see one of the days of the Son of Man, and shall not see it. And if you go down to one of the verses we read in verse... Well, in verse number 26, and then verse number 28, he talks about the days of Noah, the days of Lot. And so it is days of perversion. There are days of apostasy. There will be days, it will be days coming in the Son of Man, days of prosperity, and then days of perversion. This is a perverted society. When they want to take, I'm talking about kindergarten kids, kindergarten, first, second, third grade kids, and tell them in our schools that they can choose their own gender. You know, we don't let them get a driver's license until they're 16. We don't let them go into the army until they're 18. But at three, you know, third grade, five-year-olds in kindergarten, they're going to tell them, well, you can be a boy if you want to. You can be a girl if you want to. And they're even encouraging them to have sex change, surgery. I, I'm, uh, doesn't that blow your mind? Doesn't that just, I mean, where are the parents at today? Where, I mean, there's some that's waking up to the situation. They have, there's some new uh, people coming on the scene and some of them going down to the school boards and raising a fuss about it and all that. But, it, it just, I, I just, I just sat there and said, I can't believe that. I've seen a lot of years, a lot of things over my years, but I've never heard of all this. But the Bible says, as it was in the days of Noah, 
what does it say? They were eating and drinking and giving in marriage. Marrying, giving in marriage. Drank. They married wives, were given in marriage. Talking about multiple wives and, and really divorce and remarriage. That's what was going on in Noah's day. And then in Lot's day, we know what was going on. That's where we get the word sodomite. They were sodomites. They came from the land of Sodom. And then, of course, Gomorrah was the, the twin city next to it. And so God judged them. God, I mean, here he says, God judged them. God sent the judgment of God on both of the world because of their perversion and their violence and their wickedness. And God had to destroy the whole world in those days. Just no one his family survived. And then there is Noah, Lot's day, the Sodomites, and the angels went down to warn Lot, and the Sodomites come out, and about beat the door down, wanting to know who those men were, when they take them, the Bible says, and know them. And you know what that means. They wanted to have a sexual relationship with what they thought were men, but these men were angels. And the angels, first of all, smote them blind, and got Lot and his, uh, his children out. His wife looked back and was turned to a pillar of salt. And then the fire of God fell on Sodom. And, you know, I remember years and years ago, I was in um, St. Albans at that time. And that would have been around the mid-80s. And there was a Presbyterian preacher there. He was a good guy. He, he was conservative. He was had, a, I think, a radio talk show or something. And so he, was, he decided to get a, a Sodomite to come in and talk to him and interview him. And he, was, he brought him over here to Genesis, chapter 19. What about Lot? What about God destroying the Sodomites in that day? How they came and wanted to know the, the angels of God, wanted to be, uh, have a sexual relationship with the angels of God. And here's what this, this lesbian said, there's, or the Sodomite. He said, well, they weren't judged because of their sodomy. They were judged because of their inhospitality. They were, they were not very hospitable to God's people. And you can make up anything you want to. That's not what God says. Days of perversion. We're listening. We're living in those days. I mean, there's always been some kind of perversion going on, but not like today. They're so open about it, and if you say anything about it, if this message got out to some of them, man, they would attack me. They would call me all kinds of names. They would send all kind of hate mail, emails, everything else. Because you dare speak out against this L, what is it? L, G, T, Q. Now they got about six or seven letters. You know, the transgenders and the binary genders and... It is it is just mind-boggling to me. I don't know. Days of perversion. Look in chapter Matthew chapter 24 and verse 7. Matthew 24, 7. Dallas, did you have that? Did I give that one to you? Matthew 24 and verse number 7. For nation shall rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom. There shall be famines, pestilences, earthquakes in diverse places. And he talks about pestilences in another place. Yeah, here, famines and pestilences, earthquakes, kingdom against kingdom, Russia against Ukraine. I mean, on and on it goes. Africa. The Arabs and the Muslims fighting one another over in Israel in the West Bank. And then you got Iran building nuclear weapons talking about war. China's talking about war because Pelosi went over there to Taiwan. I mean, and Russia's already attacked that world and uh, the Europe and, and Ukraine, and they say he really wants to take over all of Europe. You know, if he conquered Ukraine, he would just go right over to Romania and he'd go up to other nations that surround Ukraine. 
And so it is days of pestilences. Notice what it says. Wars and rumors of wars. Famines, and there's still famines in Africa especially. India. There are famines, uh, not necessarily because of drought, just don't have enough food. Pestilences, floods, hurricanes, mudslides have covered whole towns and villages. Crime is out of, out of control. Shootings, killings, murders, every day, every day we hear about somebody being murdered. Disease, we had AIDS, then we had COVID-19, and then we had, now we got the monkeypox. And the monkeypox is, 95% of it is against homosexual men. It's another, another, I believe, curse of God on the AIDS and the lesbians and the sodomites, just like AIDS was with uh, years ago. And now this monkeypox is mostly around people who have contact, that have, have skin top contact, skin to skin contact, some way or another. And that's why other people get it, because if they don't know they have the virus, hadn't broke out yet, then you touch somebody, you shake somebody's hand, you got it. It comes by, it doesn't come by breathing, but they may say, well, we got to get, put mask on uh, because of monkeypox. They'll start that thing all over again. It has nothing to do with breathing. It's not a viral infection like uh, uh, COVID-19 was. And so what does it all mean? Here, here's what it means. Jesus is coming. <laughs> well, it sounds like bad news, but really to a child of God, all this is good news. It's good news that Jesus is coming. He is on the way. He could come at any moment. The Bible said, occupy till I come, but he could come at any moment. In the twinkling of an eye, the Bible said, he'll rapture us out of here. What a glorious day that's going to be. What a wonderful day that's what's going to be. You say, what should I do in the meantime? What is my responsibility? Number one, make sure you are saved. The Bible says, let no man deceive you. Don't deceive yourself. If there's no fruit, no love for God, no obedience to the Scriptures, then repent and believe the Gospel. And listen, Jesus and all the apostles, they, they said it over and over again. Jesus said, not everyone that just says to me, Lord, Lord, is going to the kingdom of heaven. And Paul wrote and said, examine yourself, make full proof of your salvation. He said, uh, examine yourselves to see whether you be in the faith. Peter wrote and said, make your calling and election sure. And so he said, make sure you are saved. Because you've heard the gospel. And there may be people listening on YouTube that's never really been born again. Stay faithful to church. Hang around godly people. Man, if any day we need the church today, we need to be here with God's people. We need to come and hear preaching. It will help you if you come with your cup up and uh, you can leave with something that will help you every service. And so stay in church. Stay close to God. Stay around God's people. Bible says, don't forsake the assembling of yourselves together as my uh, manner some is, but so much the more. Be more faithful in the last days. So much the more as you see the day approaching, the day of Christ, the day of the rapture. You see it coming. We see it coming in these scriptures. here. It is coming. He said, don't leave the church. Don't, don't quit church. Don't quit on God. Number three, stay close to God. And you do that by, number one, confessing your sin immediately, fully, honestly, confessing sin, keeping short accounts with God. Don't wait and, you know, say, well, uh, you know, I'll just wait all week and next Monday I'll confess all my sins I did this week. No, as soon as the Holy Ghost of God pricks your heart, confess that sin. The Lord, I did it. I, I'm guilty. I want you to forgive me. I claim the cleansing of the blood of Christ. 
And I'm sorry, Lord. Please help me to be a better Christian. Witness to the lost. Jesus is coming. Listen, your lost loved ones are going to hell. My family is going to hell. Occupy, Jesus. Occupy till I come. What's the last command he gave them? Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Occupy till I come. Stay busy telling people about Jesus. You can take tracks over here. If you're ever in town, just give them out a track. Just say, here's a gospel message from our church. I'd like for you to come visit us sometime. And then keep your distance from the world. That's what he said here. Be overcome, overcome the world. First John 2.15, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, love the Father is not in him. Romans 12.2, And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind by the Holy Ghost which is in you. James 4.4, 4, Know ye not that friendship of the world is enmity against God? James 1.27, He said, Keep yourself unspotted from the world. We're to keep our distance from the world. Get close to the church. Stay in church. Stay out of the things of the world. That's not talking about people. It's talking about the things that pull our heart away from God in this world. And then determine to live holy in light of Jesus' return. Don't be one of those that Jesus said that they were eating and drinking so because they did not know when the Son of Man cometh. And so they let down their guard and they just started playing church, playing games. We're, we're in the last days. But, good news, Jesus is coming. Hallelujah. Wouldn't it be wonderful to be in a perfect place, not all this junk going on, not all this transgender stuff and wickedness and crime and perversion and, and crooked politicians and all the rest of it that goes on in our country. Man, what a, what a place, what a difference, and what a different place heaven is. I mean, man, who would want to stay here? <laughs> I don't want to stay here very much longer. I said, Lord, I'm ready to go home. I am ready to take the next train out. I'm, I'm ready to go. If you want to you wanna just give me a good heart attack, I'll take it. <laughs> If the rapture comes, I'll take that. Whatever you want me to do, but I just, I'm just sick of the world, and I really want to see Jesus, who loved me and gave Himself for me. Let's bow for prayer, please.